Good morning and God bless you. This is Pastor Irvin L. Barrett. What a wonderful blessing it is to come to you again on another Sunday morning and to have the privilege and the opportunity of sharing. We thank and praise God for the wonderful privilege and the wonderful blessing that he has given unto us, affording us this wonderful opportunity of sharing by way of the word and by way of this means god is good to us and he continues to be good to us in spite of all of our situations and circumstances our god remains good he is good on purpose and he continues to bless us by his might and by his power uh, we want to begin with a word of prayer and after we've prayed we'll go directly into the word today is holy communion sunday and we're looking forward to sharing again as we are entering into a new month it is a blessing to be able to reflect and remember what christ did for us upon calvary's cross let's have a word of prayer god we thank you for this wonderful and blessed privilege of sharing we thank you that you've kept us and provided for us in the midst of all things even during the uncertainty of this horrific pandemic you have watched over us and protected us and we want to tell you thank you right now we thank you because we recognize it is your grace and mercy that has brought us through and we are much appreciative for what you have done and for what you continue to do god we pray now that you would bless those up under the sound of my voice that you would give them strength and courage that you would supply all of their needs heal their bodies regulate their minds touch them as only you are able to do. We believe in your ability and your power. We pray that you'd bless the Sunlight Church, all of its members. While we're apart, we pray that you would keep us one to another. So in the name of Jesus our Christ, we pray, amen, and thank God. If you have your Bibles, I want to look today at Psalms 27, Psalms 27, 1 through 6. Psalms 27, 1 through 6. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear, and the war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in the secret of his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up on a rock, and now shall my head be lifted above mine enemies round about me, Therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Again, the 27th division of Psalms, stanzas 1 through 6. Um, for the time that we are sharing today, I want to talk with you about hope in the midst of your battles. Hope in the midst of your battles. I do seek and solicit your prayerful participation today. As we read the words of the Psalms, we can see the image of battle being portrayed. And the psalmist is going through what we can consider is a horrific time. Uh, it is an all out battle as it appears according to the word in verse number Two, he uses the words enemies and foes. In verse 3, he uses the word host and war. <clears throat> In verse number 6, uh, again, he speaks of uh, a host encamped all around him. Uh, these phrases indicate unto us that David is in a all-out battle, that for whatever the cause or the reason there has been, uh, there is a war that has been waged against him and the enemy is attempting to prevail against him. Uh, as we look at this particular psalm, 
in the midst of what David is saying, we can see that in the midst of what he is facing, that David still has hope, that David is still trusting God and still believing in the God of his salvation. He believes that God is going to see him through. He believes that God is going to protect him. He believes that God is by his side. Uh, there is a there is a saying uh, that says that hope is a wonderful thing when it is in its proper uh, place. There is no medicine like hope, no incident so great and no tonic as powerful as the expectation of something that is better to come in our future than what we're facing right now. Emily Dickinson in one of her poems said, hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul. There is no medicine like hope. Hope is the dream of the walking man. Martin Luther said, e everything that is done in the world is done by hope. When we lose hope, we lose everything. When we lose hope, we lose the possibility. We lose our faith. We lose our trust in God. Here is how hope is described in the dictionary. To have a wish to get or to do something or for something to happen or to be true, especially something that seems possible or likely. Hope for the world, from the world's point of view, is just what that definition describes. The world seems or excuse me, sees hope as a wish or as a desire. Hope for the world is a longing for something that may or may not take place. But the Bible teaches us a vastly different definition of what hope is really all about. Listen to the words of Jeremiah, and I believe the words of Jeremiah can help us. Blessed is the man that trusteth, trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Also Paul, he said, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of them is charity. But then also in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, the word says that hope is merely a fond wish or a desire. The Bible teaches us that hope is a deep settling of confidence that God will keep his promise. That's a wonderful thing that God will keep his promise. We can rest assured that in the midst of our overwhelming times that God does and will keep his promises. I know that you have battles. All of us have battles and challenges. We're going through some difficult times right now, some overwhelming times. But the question is, do you have hope? Are you trusting and believing God? Are you believing that God can handle your situation? And are you believing that God is going to bring us through what we're facing right now? We must have hope in the midst of our battles. Notice, if you will, in the text, the text gives unto us the indication that here uh, the psalmist is trusting and believing that God is going to bring him through. And that's what you have to have as well as you settle in the confidence, the surety of God, the confidence that God is going to do it. You've got to believe that whatever he's promised, that he's going to make it happen. This is the essence of hope and hope is a possession we all need uh, if we're going to be able to make it in the tough times of our lives. I want to look at these verses and I want to see how we can have hope in the midst of our battles because I think that during what we're facing that all of us need a word of encouragement. I want to show you this morning uh, from the words of David why you and I have a reason to hope in the Lord and have a reason to trust and believe in the possibilities of God. Notice with me again from the first three verses of this text uh, where our hope comes from. David begins this Psalms by declaring his personal faith in the Lord. And I need to tell you this morning that if you're going to make it, you must definitely have faith in the power of God and in the possibilities of God for your life. You've got to believe and you've got to trust 
that God is going to handle it. This is the basis of our foundation of hope is that we believe that God can do it. And that's the very thing that David has here in this text. David, first of all, has a confidence that God is going to handle it. David tells us that God is his light, his salvation, his strength. And there was a tremendous blessing in these three uh, titles that he attributes to God. Uh, as a light, God delivers his people from darkness. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his son? As light, God guides our feet. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The Lord is a lamp unto our feet and a guide unto our path. Uh, God directs us and guides us according to his divine will. As salvation, God delivers his people from damnation. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that heareth my words and believeth on me and um, believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. As salvation, God secures our souls and keeps us. But then as well as strength, God delivers his people from defeat. I love this part because we can be thankful that God is there to give us the victory. Thanks be unto God who gives unto us the victory through Jesus the Christ our Lord. But then as strength, he also guarantees our success in my weakness, in my overwhelming circumstances. When I can't handle it, I've got somebody who is able to handle all of my overwhelming circumstances, all of my difficulties, and that is the God of my salvation. He can handle it. How many know that he can handle it? How many know that he's got the power and the ability and he can do it? And if we trust him and believe him, he's, he will do anything but fail. So David here gives these great characteristics unto God. And these great characteristics gives unto him hope in the midst of what he is facing. And you and I also can have this same hope and this same belief. We can trust God in the midst of overwhelming circumstances because of who God is. And because of who God is, we can believe that God is able to handle our most difficult situations. Because of who he is, we need not to fear any enemy. We need not to fear anything that arises in our lives. We need not to be overwhelmed by circumstances or situations. Satan himself is no match for the sovereign God of our salvation. Satan has no power or authority that is greater than the power and the authority of the Almighty God. But not only is he confident uh, in the person of the Lord, but he is also confident in the performance of the Lord. Notice, if you will, in the text once again, because the text uh, outlines all of the possibilities of God. In this text, it tells us he, he's confident that God can do it. David declares that his present hope in the Lord rests upon that which the Lord has done in the past. He is trusting God to do what he's done all over again because God has demonstrated and proven his ability to move on his behalf. God did not fail him then and he will not fail him now. God did not fail you then and God is not going to fail you now. God protected you then and God is going to protect you right now. That's the assurance that David had that God was going to keep him, that God was going to protect him, that God was going to sustain him. My brothers and sisters, this is the same confidence that you and I can have today that the God of our salvation is going to bless, keep, and sustain his children, and he's going to do it because of his ability, because of his power, because he performs on behalf of his children. But then we've got to know and understand that he's done all this before. This is nothing new for God. The God that we serve is unchangeable. He's the same God with the same power 
that he has always been, even in feast, even in famine, even in a pandemic, God is still God. And somebody needs to know that today, that even now, God is still God. Because he has been faithful in our past, we can count on him being faithful even now and definitely in our future. You got to think of all the things that God has done. You got to think of the victories, think of the blessings, think of the enemies that he's allowed you to conquer. Think of how he has moved. Think of how he has uh, sustained you and kept you. Think of how when you were, uh, your back was against the wall and God stepped in and gave you victory. Think of the things that God has done and how he has performed in your life so many times. And when you think upon, upon those things and reflect upon those things, we can be assured of what God is able to do even at this time, even at this moment in our lives. Has he done anything in the past? Do you believe that he can do something in your life today? Has he kept you in the past? Do you believe that he can do it all over again today? Has he been there for you? Do you believe that he can do the, th do the same thing today uh, as he did back then? Not only does he live um, with faith, but our faith gives us hope. We also live uh, serving a faithful God who is always faithful to his promise. David uh, mentions three great goals in these verses, and these goals arise from a single commitment to serve the Lord faithfully with his whole heart and to give God all of his love. Notice how David is committed to the Lord and, and his commitment to the Lord is manifested. He is committed to lingering near the Lord. David wants to spend his entire life in the house of the Lord. He wants to be in the place where the Lord dwells and where the Lord's presence is. This is the theme that David has repeated, not only in this Psalm, but in previous Psalms. David, David, David even envies the little bird that makes its nest near the tabernacle. And uh, David looks at the bird and sees the bird and, and, and wishes to have the same uh, type of cavalier, careless, uh, carefree life that this little bird have. His desire is to be where God is. His desire is to be in the presence of God. And I, uh, every true child of God ought to really have a burning and a yearning to be in the presence of God. Listen, I've, I've been dreaming about worship, dreaming about preaching, dreaming about being in worship and serving God. And, and uh, in fact, uh, this past week, three nights in a row, um, I woke up from preaching in my dreams and it was just a, a, a wonderful thing because I'm longing to be in the presence of God. I'm longing to be in the worship experience. I'm longing. When you love God, you have a longing to be in his presence. But not only that, uh, there ought to be a desire um, within us. We need to have that same passion to be where the Lord is honored and where he is worshiped. We ought to have that same desire within ourselves. We ought to have a longing to be in his presence. Uh, we ought to have a, a great desire and a great commitment. And it ought to be genuine. David's desire is a genuine desire to be in the presence of the Lord. Those who want to linger near the Lord will find a way. Those who want to be in his presence will do what they can. Those who desire to know God will be committed unto him. You can be just as committed now as you were previously. Yeah, it's a unusual time. It's a difficult moment, but you can still be committed unto the Lord in your own way. You can still pray. You can still fast. You can still seek him. You can still call upon his name. There's nothing hindering you from being uh, in God's presence at this moment, at this time. You can still be in the presence of the Lord. But then also he's committed to loving the Lord. Notice what he says. David wants to behold the beauty of the Lord. That is, he wants to seek his face. Not only is David committed to being where the Lord is, but he is also committed to worshiping the Lord. And this is a worthy goal for life. This should be the goal of every believer. 
if we're going to worship the Lord, we, 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 we're going to have to do it his way. Jesus told us how to worship him. How do we worship him? In spirit and in truth. We are to worship the Lord. We are to have a longing to worship the Lord and a commitment to worshiping and praising the Lord. But then he is also committed to learning of the Lord. David also expresses his desire to call upon the Lord. He, he wants to commune with God. He wants to have fellowship with God and make his request known unto God. This is another image of worshiping God and being in the presence of God. David here declares his utter dependence upon the Lord and the, and the necessity of God in his life. David looks beyond his own abilities and sees the limitless provisions of the Lord. Therefore, he wants nothing more than to be able to call upon the name of the Lord. What a limitless resource we have when we understand the power that we have been given through prayer. When we invite God, when we, in, when we talk to God, when we seek God through prayer, when we learn how to seek his face, call upon his name when we commit ourselves unto the Lord in prayer. But then he also says our comfort is in the Lord. Uh, our, our comfort in the Lord provides for us a sense of hope. Notice what he says, and we're still in these same verses. Look now at verses 5 and 6, and we're, we're almost done. God has a shelter in place for his children. God has a shelter that is in place for his children. And we've got to know and understand again that that's a wonderful blessing. David tells us that the Lord will hide us in his pavilion. David says God is going to hide him. God is going to keep him and protect him. A king's pavilion was a tent that was erected in the middle of the army's encampment. The tent was surrounded by <clears throat> the army. Brave officers, the, the, the bravest officers, all of the host uh, would be encamped around the tent. The king's pavilion was the safest place on the battlefield. Those who were fortunate enough to be allowed to enter into the king's pavilion, guess what? They were protected by the soldiers who were, uh, who were encamped all around and those who were engaged in battle on the battlefield. Notice what he says. He says and uses the word hide. He says that God is going to hide me as the battle <clears throat> is raging all around us. We are safely tucked away in the king's pavilion as there's havoc being wreaked all around us. We are safe and protected in the king's pavilion. Your life is hidden in Christ. That's what the book of Colossians tells us. Colossians 3 and 3 tells us that your life is hidden with Christ in God. And you and I can understand that there is no safer place in all of the universe than in the hand of the Almighty God. This is a promise that he has given unto us that he will keep us and protect us and he keeps us in the innermost part. No enemy can penetrate the defenses and enter the private place that God has set aside to watch over and protect his, his children. And this assurance of his shelter allows us to weather the storm and to persevere in the midst of overwhelming circumstances. Just knowing this gives us a sense of hope and possibility that we can make it against the most difficult situations and circumstances. Why? Because God is by our side. God has a secret place for us. The word tabernacle, and I'm almost done here, brings to mind the place of worship. The place of worship, the secret refers to the holy of holies. That place where, which was off limits unto just the average people, only the high priests could go into the Holy of Holies. Only those who were consecrated and dedicated were allowed to enter into the Holy of Holies. There was not a place that everybody could go in or be a part of. It was a place that was sanctified, set aside for only certain people to enter in and certain people to be a part of. God said, David says uh, that God treated him like a like a precious friend and he took him into the a special place that he might protect him and watch over him uh, to preserve his life and so it is you and I have been privy 
to as well enter into that safe place. God has a secure place for us. Notice as well in the text as we hurry along. David has the assurance that even when uh, life threatens to overflow him, the Lord will set him up on a rock, a place that is unchangeable, powerful, and immovable. Of course, this rock refers to none other than the Lord himself. The rock refers to the great rock of our salvation. It is a rock that is able to sustain us and to keep us in the midst of everything we're going through. God has a special place for his children. David says that he will worship the Lord. He will praise the Lord because of the things the Lord has done for him because the Lord has lifted him above his battles because the Lord has hidden him away from the secret place because the Lord sheltered him from the terrors of the battle. And he says, because the Lord has done these things, I'm going to praise the Lord. What a wonderful lesson for us. When we see what God has done, when we see how God has blessed, when we see how God is sustaining and keeping us, we ought to want to worship the Lord. And worship is not something that is only preserved for the sanctuary. So you should worship God anywhere, anytime, anyhow. You ought to worship God uh, for what he has done and for what he continues his name. To worship him means to exalt his name. To worship him means to praise him. To worship him means that we allow ourselves to uh, 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 adore God for the blessings that he has provided in our lives. Are you fighting some battles? Are you fighting and going through some difficulties? Are you in the midst of some overwhelming times? Are you going through some challenges that are overwhelming in your life? Can I suggest unto you to have faith in the power of the Almighty God? Trust God. Trust and believe God. Let Him handle your overwhelming situations. Let Him handle your most perplexing and difficult moments. Let him handle those overwhelming periods in your life. Of course, we're all facing things. We're all going through this un, un, unexpected pandemic that is overwhelming our world. But guess what? God is still God. You can rest in the comfort of God. The Son of God who died for our sins and got up with power in his hand is the same God that is sustaining and keeping us and the same God that is blessing us even at this time you can rest assured that God is going to keep you that God is going to sustain you that our hope is in the power of the Almighty God let's have a another word of prayer God thank you for the opportunity and the privilege we have to share thank you for your word and thank you for making your word believable and receivable i pray and ask in the name of jesus the christ that you would allow your people to rest in the comfort of your assurance that you would allow your people to realize and to recognize that you are ultimately in control of all things that there is nothing any greater any better than your ability <clears throat> and your power please Continue to bless us. Please continue to keep us and sustain us as you're only able to do. This is our prayer we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. And thank God. Listen, I want to uh, remind you and encourage you that even now uh, you can receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord God and Savior. If you've strayed away and in case there's someone who is listening or tuned in today that uh, that does not know the Lord or has not accepted him. You don't have to wait until we get back into worship. You can accept him now. He can and will come into your life and he can and will make a difference in your life. All you have to do is say, Lord, enter into my heart. He is seeking people just like you. He's seeking people uh, who, has, who have fallen. He's seeking people who has gone astray. He's seeking people that has stumbled on this journey. If that's you, you don't have to stay in that position. God is saying, I'm able to make a difference in your life. I want to make a difference if you just give me the opportunity. I can and will bless and keep you. 
I can and will sustain you. All you have to do is accept him. Ask him to enter into your heart. Ask him to enter into your into your into your into your soul. And he will. He will make a difference. Even as believers. Maybe you just want a closer walk with the Lord. He's able and willing to give that to you as well. All you have to do is make your request known unto the Lord. Why not do that today? Why not accept him? Why not uh, make a deeper commitment? Why not trust him and believe him uh, to do wonderful things in your life? He's able and he's willing to do it. God bless you. Uh, we're preparing now to, to give, and I trust that you will give as the Lord has blessed and prospered you to give, understanding and knowing that giving as a is a major part of worship, and uh, just as any other area of worship is, giving is a major part of the worship experience, and I want to encourage you to give. As the Lord has blessed and prospered you to give, we have a few parameters that are set up for giving. And I want to uh, encourage you to utilize those areas and uh, give as uh, the Lord has blessed you to give. We have um, set up these areas so that your gifts uh, can be received. And I'm just trying to locate my prompts here. We've got a few ways that you can give. You can give through Givelify and you can give through um, pray.com and as well you can give to myself Pastor Irvin L. Barrett uh, through Cash App these areas have been set up uh, to make it easier for you uh, to be able to give as we're in this um, pandemic you can still give you can still be a blessing unto the church and unto God you can still give your tithes and your offering special gifts whatever you can still be a blessing even unto your pastor during this time and as well as I've stated you can give through givelify through pray.com and through cash app I encourage you to please ma'am please sir utilize these parameters that have been set up and understand that they're put in place so that you will be able to give and in doing so, uh, you can and will uh, receive blessings uh, from the Almighty God. And so I want to uh, encourage you uh, to please, ma'am, please, sir, make sure that you're giving uh, as the Lord has blessed you to give. Utilize these platforms and uh, let's be a blessing and let's do what God is calling on us to do at this time. Amen. Thank you so much. We're preparing now to reflect and remember what Christ has done for us on Calvary. And we are thankful that we have the opportunity of again visiting Calvary and remembering that Christ died for our sins and he rose that we might have a right uh, to everlasting life. As we prepare to partake today, Remember what the Word of God says, and the Word of God tells us that as often as we do this, we do, the, we do show forth the death and the suffering of our Savior. And we do remember what He did for us in dying for our sins. When Jesus met with His disciples, He took bread and broke it and gave it unto them. And He said unto them, Take, eat ye all of it. It's a symbol of my body that shall be bruised and beaten for you. He said, uh, please take and do this in remembrance of me. And so shall we commune with our bread. He also gave unto them a cup, and in that cup it contained the fruit of the vine. He said unto them, take, drink ye all of it. This cup is a symbol of my blood that shall be given for you this also do in remembrance of me shall we commune with our wine God bless you amen we're thankful that we've had this opportunity today uh, to share with you and we're blessed by your presence and your participation 
We want to encourage you to continue to do all that you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Uh, continue to pray one for another. Continue to pray for the church. Amen. The church needs your prayers and we need your your help and your support. And so we want to encourage you, to, please, ma'am, please, sir, make sure you're praying on behalf of your church and praying that God will keep us and sustain us. I'd love to hear from you. And I'm thankful, always thankful, to be able to hear your voice and to be able to share with you. It is a wonderful blessing to be able to share with you uh, in whatever way God allows us to share. It is a blessing, and I want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And we're praying, continuing to evaluate, but in the midst of it all, we're trusting and believing God that in his own time, in due season, uh, that God is going to bring about a change and he's going to uh, allow us back into regular worship and to regular settings. Until that time, stay safe, be blessed, continue to trust God and continue to believe upon God's promises. Have an amazing day. May God continue to bless and keep you and make his face to shine upon you is my prayer. God bless.